Hello and welcome to Sat TV Week, the news programme for the international satellite industry. In this week's programme, Trisha Jones looks at the latest space news, Georgina has news on space protocol developments, Gabby has the latest on a nomadic satellite based telecommunication system, emergency.lu. But first, Ariane Spass's second Soyuz flight from French Guiana. It's set for liftoff on Friday, December the 16th at 11.03 p.m. local time. The payload of six passengers includes Earth observation satellites developed for civilian and defence image gathering, along with four French microsatellite demonstrators. The mission will be Ariane Spass's year-ending flight at the spaceport and comes less than two months after the company's historic maiden launch of Soyuz from French Guiana in October. Also scheduled in 2011 is another Soyuz launch at Baikonur Cosmodrome with six Global Star second generation satellites, which is scheduled during the week of December the 25th and will be conducted on behalf of Ariane Spass by a Starsum affiliate. <laughs> Direct Government Technologies has signed a manufacturing agreement with Select Tech Geospatial of Springfield, Ohio to design and manufacture two different variants of airborne certified enclosures. The iDirect E850 MP series satellite router airborne enclosures will include a standard 19 inch rack mount unit and an ARINC 600 interface based 4 MCU unit that will include a processor which will enable antenna control for any make and model of airborne antenna. The rack mount unit will fit a standard 19 inch rack or can be integrated into a transit case solution. Both variants will be designed and manufactured to the strict government certification requirements for airborne electronic systems. Select Tech, which is leading manufacturer and integrator of electronic systems, communication sensors, hardware fabrications and frames, will design and manufacture both aircraft variants at its advanced manufacturing facility. Now here's Tricia with the Space News. NASA's target launch date for SpaceX's second demonstration flight will be February the 7th, pending completion of final safety reviews, testing and verification. NASA has also agreed to allow SpaceX to send its Dragon spacecraft to rendezvous with the ISS in a single flight. During the flight, Dragon will conduct a series of checkout procedures that will test and prove its systems in advance of the rendezvous with the station. The primary objective for the flight include a flyby of the space station at a distance of approximately two miles to validate the operation of sensors and flight systems necessary for a safe rendezvous and approach. The spacecraft also will demonstrate the capability to abort the rendezvous if required. Dragon will perform the final approach to the ISS while the station crew grapples the vehicle with the station's robotic arm. The capsule will be berthed to the Earth-facing side of the Harmony node. At the end of the mission, the crew will reverse the process, detaching Dragon from the station for its return to Earth and splash down in the Pacific off the coast of California. If the rendezvous and attachment to the station are not successful, SpaceX will complete the third demonstration flight in order to achieve these objectives as originally planned. O3B Networks Limited has exercised the first of two options on its contract with Arinspace for an additional launch of 2014 the O3B network satellite constellation. By exercising this option, O3B has allocated a total of three launches of 12 satellites to Arian Space. The proposed space assets protocol is causing heated discussion in the industry. Georgina has the latest. CASBAR has joined the European Satellite Operators Association, the Satellite Industry Association of the United States and the Space Industry Association of Australia to express urgent global concern over proposed new international legislation, the Space Assets Protocol, sponsored by the International Institute of the Unification of Private Law based in Italy. Meanwhile, some 90 satellite operators, manufacturers and financiers, drawn from around the world, 
have also written to the Institute and its member governments to register their own deep-seated reservations. According to CASBAR and the other international organisations, the Space Assets Protocol would create an unprecedented and unnecessary legal framework for financing satellite and space programmes, despite the fact that no problems have been identified with the existing framework for funding commercial satellite programmes. Rather than promoting new financing, the proposed protocol risks complicating and damaging the existing and well-functioning processes. The industry would be confronted with the prospect of obligations and costs from the new legislation that purports to remedy a problem that simply does not exist. And finally, the government of Luxembourg has developed a nomadic satellite-based telecommunication system, Emergency.lu, aimed at assisting humanitarian agencies. Gabby has the story. ITU and the Government of Luxembourg have agreed to cooperate on strengthening emergency telecoms and rapid response in the event of natural disasters. ITU and Luxembourg are members of the Emergency Telecommunications Cluster, comprising UN agencies and other humanitarian partners. The Government of Luxembourg has developed a nomadic satellite-based telecommunications system, Emergency.lu, aimed at assisting humanitarian agencies respond to communities affected by natural disasters, conflicts or protracted crises. This platform will be available as a global public good to the international humanitarian community as of January 1, 2012, with Luxembourg funding its development, implementation, operation and maintenance to the tune of 17.2 million euros. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching.